Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily. I'm Natalia Moczulska and this is the news. Poland's 2050 and Civic Coalition deputies have submitted a draft amendment to the law, which assumes that the freeze on energy prices and the expansion of wind farms is to come from Orlin Company funds. The release of the details of the draft translated into a swift reaction from the stock exchange. According to Polish Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki, the bill is written under the dictates of lobbyists. The windmill law is being presented as a remedy for high energy prices. However, some say it contains a number of controversial solutions due to the ambiguities that have emerged over the bill. Law and justice politicians have submitted a request to the Regional Prosecutor's Office and the Central Anti-Corruption Bureau. According to proposed legal changes, the distance of erecting windmills is to depend on the volume of the turbine. However, there are more changes. The draft shows that the determination of the location of a wind power plant investment is to take into account the distance of the power plant from the area subject to acoustic protection, depending on the maximum noise emitted by the wind power plant. It is proposed that the location of a wind power plant should depend on the power of the noise they emit. Quieter windmills will be allowed to stand closer, while the louder ones should be located much farther from buildings so as not to cause nuisance. This is what was written in the justification. The drafters propose, among other things, to add in the real estate management law that the public purpose is also construction, reconstruction and maintenance of a renewable energy source installation with a total installed electrical capacity of more than one megawatt, in particular a wind power plant with an accompanying investment. The mere announcement of the new regulations triggered a strong market reaction. Polish oil company Orlin lost, while at the same time German windmill maker Siemens gained. Given these developments, Orlin CEO Daniel Obajtek has written a letter to President Andrzej Duda asking for an in-depth analysis of the windmill law. The motives for such an action are purely political and calculated to deliberately lower the market value of Orlin and even a first step towards the privatization of the company. The draft is to allow the construction of quiet windmills within 300 meters of buildings. The draft's authors also propose expanding the catalog of strategic investments to include wind turbines, which means that the compatibility of their location with the local zoning plan will not have to be analyzed. After the media storm over the disclosure of the details of this law, its authors began talking about clarifying the regulations. The Israeli army has announced that it has resumed military operations against Hamas in the Gaza Strip. Israeli air and artillery have been shelling Gaza City since this morning. The truce expired Friday at 7 a.m. local time or 6 a.m. Polish time. According to the Israeli side, the ceasefire was broken earlier by Hamas, which fired rockets into Israel. After a seven-day hostage release pause, having failed to provide a list of more hostages for release, the Hamas Army of Terror in the Gaza Strip violated the terms of the agreed framework and launched rocket fire at Israeli communities. At 5.43 a.m., Hamas fired the first rocket from Gaza, and that rocket fire has since intensified, with sirens blaring across southern Israel all morning, including in communities that are still under mandatory evacuation orders, and in those kibbutzim ethnically cleansed by Hamas, during its campaign of systematic extermination on October 7th. Unfortunately, Hamas decided to terminate the pause by failing to release all the kidnapped women as it was obligated to do so and kidnapped children and by resuming rocket fire. Despite the resumption of hostilities, mediators are continuing efforts to reach an agreement. The Israeli prison service announced that it had released 30 Palestinians from Israeli prisons overnight in the seventh exchange for Israeli hostages. Another group of Palestinian prisoners released from Israeli jails included eight women and 22 teenagers under the age of 19. Eight Israeli hostages from the Gaza Strip were freed yesterday. In total, Hamas released 110 hostages under the truce agreement, in effect since November 24th, while Israel released 240 Palestinian prisoners. Three people were injured in a helicopter crash that crashed on the M40 highway in Madrid. Huge traffic jams have formed along the route in both directions.
A private helicopter taking part in the European Rotors Fair in Madrid crashed in the middle lane of the M40 highway today. Police are investigating the causes of the accident. It is not ruled out that it may have occurred as a result of a strong gust of wind that caused the machine to hit a pillar of a bridge crossing the highway. Another hypothesis involves a technical failure of the helicopter. Madrid Mayor Jose Luis Martinez praised the helicopter pilot thanks to his skills a greater tragedy was avoided. The highway was full of cars at the time of the accident, but the pilot made a forced landing in the middle of the traffic lanes. World leaders participating in this year's UN Climate Change Conference arrived at the summit's venue at Expo City, Dubai, for the first day of the Leaders' Summit. There, they were greeted by UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres and United Arab Emirates President Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed. Earlier today, the participants of the summit signed a food security deal in which 134 countries will integrate food systems into climate plans by 2025. The Climate Forum formally started on November 30th and saw delegates adopting a new fund to help poor nations cope with costly climate disasters. The Loss and Damage Fund, established at COP27 in Egypt in 2022, has been a long-standing demand of developing nations coping with the cost of the devastation caused by ever-increasing extreme weather events, such as droughts, floods and rising sea levels. After being formally appointed the COP28 president, United Arab Emirates Minister of Industry and Advanced Technology, Sultan Ahmed Al-Jaber, said this year's conference will focus on climate finance challenges. He called on all parties to restore confidence in multilateralism. And we see, as you see, that the world has reached a crossroads pledge that I will run an inclusive and transparent process one that encourages free and open discussion between all parties. The U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken announced that the United States will join the Emirates Declaration on Sustainable Agriculture, Resilient Food Systems and Climate Action. The Emirates Declaration on Sustainable Agriculture, Resilient Food Systems and Climate Action represents a landmark commitment by now over 130 countries to better align efforts on agriculture and food systems with climate action. And today, I'm very pleased to announce that the United States is joining the declaration and will serve as a founding member of the Technical Cooperation Collaborative to help implement its vision. British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak spoke at the conference after pledging £1.6 billion, or about $2 billion, for a climate fund, which includes up to £500 million to tackle the causes of deforestation, £316 million for energy innovation projects around the world, and up to £60 million for loss and damage. While we make new commitments here, major emitters must dramatically accelerate delivery of what they've already promised. Let me be clear, the United Kingdom is totally committed to net zero, the Paris Agreement, and to keeping 1.5 alive. That's why we've decarbonized faster than any other major economy. Our 2030 target means the deepest cuts of any major emitter, and we're determined to deliver. But instead of putting more pressure on working people, we're choosing a pragmatic new approach. We're ramping up renewables and embracing the opportunities of technology and green industry because we've shown that you can cut emissions while growing the economy and creating jobs. The president of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, also addressed the world leaders at the conference. Let's hear what she had to say. The European Union has peaked already. We have reduced emissions and we are on track to overshoot our target for 2030. And we just adopted a law to drastically reduce methane emissions. Second, on targets. This COP can make history. Last spring, the European Union launched a call to triple renewables and to double energy efficiency by 2030. After a year of record temperatures, the pressure is on for this year's summit to accelerate action to limit climate change. Countries, however, are divided over the future of fossil fuel, the burning of which is the main cause of climate change. So allow me to have a message for fossil fuel company leaders. Your old role is rapidly aging. Do not double down on an obsolete business model. 
lead the transition to renewables using the resources you have available. Make no mistake, the road to climate sustainability is also the only viable pathway to economic sustainability of your companies in the future. And I urge governments to help industry make the right choice by regulating, legislating, putting a fair price on carbon, ending fossil fuel subsidies, and adopting a windfall tax on profits. A key task for the summit will be the global stock take, an assessment of countries' progress in meeting the Paris Agreement goal of limiting global warming to well below 2 degrees Celsius. The conference will run from November 30th to December 12th, welcoming more than 70,000 delegates from around the globe in a bid to work out a worldwide solution to the pressing climate issues facing the planet and all mankind. This decisive action on the Loss and Damage Fund marks a breakthrough on the first day of the COP28. Several countries led by the United Arab Emirates made their financial commitments to the fund, with the United Arab Emirates contributing 100 million U.S. dollars, Germany 100 million dollars, Britain 40 million pounds or about 50.6 million dollars, including 20 million pounds for other arrangements, Japan 10 million dollars, and the United States 17.5 million. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Please stay tuned for Poland Daily Weather, Poland Daily Business, and some of our other programs. But for me, it's have a wonderful weekend.